Okay, so this is Scooter. She's a three-year-old paint filly. She's sorrel with a lot of chrome, as you can see. Let's just look at these cute pictures of her before we get into it. So basically, this video is the entire session pretty much that I worked with her to make my shorter sale video. So the other sale video is just a few minutes and it shows some things that she can do. And this one you can see, you know, how she reacts when she's scared. And I'm going to kind of talk about some things that she's good at, some things that I think she needs work on. So I caught her. Now we're taking her into the round pen, letting her go. She kind of walks away, but then she walks back over. It's pretty typical for her to just hang out with you, which is pretty good. And so we're desensitizing here. She's about 15, one and a half, maybe 15 too. I was trying to measure her and see where she was at, which was difficult to do by myself. But she's pretty good about desensitizing to things like a whip or a rope. You can swing it all around her. Um, she's pretty good about anything that you do with rhythm and she'll just calm right down. You can do it in front of her, next to her. I always start out with this with her just because it's like a, a way to start, um, you know, I give her the chance to stand still and relax instead of just making her work right away. Next up, I wanted to show how she handles her feet. If she moves around or anything when she's trimmed by the farrier, I just say, okay, hang on one second, and I'll take her and I'll work her, and then have her stand again for the farrier, and usually that does it. I'm not going to say that she's perfect with her feet. I'm not going to say she's perfect with anything, because I've worked with her really sporadically. I really, really like Scooter. Here she is being brushed, and I have her sister, too, that looks almost exactly like her. They have, like, the same markings are the same age, same sire. And um, yeah, I wanted to keep them, but I have got too many horses, too much going on. I'm going to school and I just really need to downsize. And every time I work with Scooter, like I worked with her to make this video, <laughs> I'm always like, oh man, I really want to keep her. So here we go. We're round penning. So the point of this exercise is to be able to make her go, stop, turn, and when she turns, she should turn to the inside. So I, I speed up a lot of this video, as you can see, otherwise it would be forever, and it already is a super long video. So here I'm going to ask her for a turn, point her out the other direction, she turns to the inside. With anything else, she doesn't do it correctly all the time, but most of the time she's pretty good. Another turn to the inside. Another turn. And have her come in. So instead of pointing her off the new direction, I just face away from her and have her come in. And then I immediately go to desensitizing her. You can see for a second she was like, oh my gosh, are you going to spank me? Just because I'd been using the whip to make her go for the last couple of minutes. So I just say, no, you're all right. I'm just going to pet you with it. And that's the thing I like about her is that she's pretty good at problem solving, I would say. Like she can figure out, you know, if she gets worried, she can figure out whether the situation is actually threatening. So here is leading her. Now I've never done like showmanship with her or anything or taught her how to set up her feet, but look how cute she is, her little pivot. I think she'd be really cute in showmanship someday if someone wanted to do that with her. She pretty much just stops and stuff off of my body language. Her backup's really nice. She's really good to back up. I can pretty much back her up as well as I can lead her forward. Another pivot. 
And I honestly haven't worried about her keeping her pivot foot. I've just been worrying about her crossing her front feet over. But she already, you know, is trying to figure out which foot to keep still. So next up, I'm going to have her lunge. <clears throat> so she's lunging around me on the mounting block here. And I don't know how many of you guys have like tried to lunge a horse while standing in a fixed point, but they'll pull you all over the place. And she's really, really good most of the time about just staying in one spot while you lunge her. And also the nice thing about her is she can walk, trot, and lope both directions on a lunge line. So she, you know, she's not going to just run around all the time. She's not hard to make go, and even when she's loping around, she doesn't pull you really hard and pull you off the mounting block. I mean, there are times where I have to get down and make her soften up again and stay close to me, but in general, she's learned to not pull on your... So here I tell her basically to cozy up to me on the mounting block. This is super helpful. I teach this to all my horses, and especially when they're young and you're trying to get them to the point of being ridden. Getting them to scoot over after they've just been working, they end up loving that. They're like, okay, I want to scoot over. I want to have this person, you know, sit on me and move all around. And the things that would normally scare a horse, they start to really like. So you can lay over her, bounce around, tap her in the flanks, bounce up and down. Looks kind of crazy sped up. <laughs> sit on her. I've sat on her several times. I'm sure you probably already saw if you're watching this video from the sale description. Look at her being good about that. That um, she's not broke to ride, obviously. This is all just groundwork. So you can do the same thing, cozying up to the fence. Teach her to side pass over there. I can move all around, make noises, swing the rope all over, and she should just stand there. I can put my leg on her, put weight on her. And then I flex her head around so that she can't really go anywhere, jump down get back up and you can see this whole time she just doesn't care slide back down so this exercise they call circle driving basically it works on her bending all of it should relate to riding someday and so for this you've got the yielding the hindquarters you got them bringing their front end through and then staying on a nice circle that's kind of small and she has to bend around so it works on a lot of things. And basically you can just see her willingness here. Point her through. There she goes. And then you'll see I pet her with the stick to make her stop. A lot of times I'll like throw the rope on him, pet him, and that all just means stop and stand still. I do a lot of desensitizing, so swing the stick around there. Now here's the tarp. She really doesn't care about the tarp all that much. She knows how to walk over it, stand on it, and then pulling it underneath her here. A lot of horses would get worried about that. Swinging it over her, making her lunge around a little bit, letting it fall off. Now this that I have her do, I have her do with the saddle too. I have the saddle undone and I'll let it fall off of her while she's lunging and then she has to go check on her fallen rider. That way if you know, something falls off of her, she won't, it won't be the first time she'll have had the tarp, the saddle, things fall. Over. Now here, I, we have a huge tarp hanging from the back of our shop, so I pulled that toward her. She was a little scared, just did a little bit of sending, and right away she goes up and starts sniffing and investigating. And that's how it is with most things, like if she's scared to get in a trailer, if she's scared to go over tarp, you just work her a little bit and release when she's going by it or over it. Now, I put the hobbles on her. Okay, little disclaimer here. She doesn't fight the hobbles. Like, she knows that her feet are together and that she can't, you know, walk off like a normal horse can. But I will say that I taught her this incorrectly and she does know how to hop with the hobbles. So when she learned that, I was like, shoot, I should have stayed and watched her and made sure she didn't hop. But I didn't. I was like, oh, she's so good. I'm going to leave her alone. Shouldn't have done that. She learned how to hop. So... During this whole time, this whole sped up part, I'm going to look like a little bit aggressive because I'm trying to show that even if you get a little bit more aggressive, more than normal, and you scare her, like I'm trying to scare her with the bag here, she's not going to um, 
freak out and go off with the hobbles. But back to the hobbling story. Yeah, so I sidelined her as well as put on the front hobbles to try to stop her from hopping. And within a few minutes, she had learned to put her back foot that had the sideline side forward and then hop the front feet and back feet and front feet. And so basically, she does know how to move around with the hobbles. So, but she's not fighting. When she does that, she's just like, I just want to walk over here. So I'll hop over there. But she's not, you know, crazy freaked out. It's just that she knows how, unfortunately, my fault. So loading in the trailer, I've worked a lot on this with her. She's stood tight in the trailer a lot. So you can see I just opened the door, didn't work her, just walked her right in. Now I will say I have only loaded her in this trailer, so it's very possible that if she tried going in another trailer, she might be a little bit worried at first, but with the skills she has, she should be pretty good about it. Tap all over. Um, I'm closing her in the divider here. Now when we actually took this video, I just hung out and played with my dog for a few minutes while she stood in there and she didn't make a peep. Closing her in. And I've only actually ever trailered her anywhere, like actually taken her anywhere and taken her out of the trailer two times. And they were both after this sale video. I was like, I should get her out now that she's three years old and she's only ever been trailered to my house once. Yeah, see, so I was playing with my dog. Good. So she moved her butt over, so I just patted her, scooted her back over. Now, I don't like it when you go in there and they're immediately like, let me out. That's how a lot of my other horses are. So when I was working with Scooter on this, I tried to make her stand in there. And a lot of times after you untie them, they'll immediately be thinking that they are going to get out. So I'll just spend a while petting her. I don't like it when they race backwards. It can be dangerous. Like I said, I've got other horses that I didn't work with this way and they've got those issues. Now she can back out. Obviously she doesn't love backing off of a cliff, but she does back out. I say down when her foot's about to hit, hit the ground. Now I pull her right back in. And I've noticed with some horses that as soon as you back them out, they're like, oh, okay, I'm out of here. And she was like that in the beginning too. But now she's able to get out and in, hop right back in, with no problems. You can turn her around and walk her out too. And I like how she walks out of the trailer. She does it really slowly, puts her front feet down, and then just waits. Like right here, you can see that's usually how she gets out of the trailer. She just sits there, hangs out. And part of that is because in the beginning I'd work her when she <laughs> she wanted to get out. So now she's like, I don't know if I actually want to get out of here. Took her over to the trampoline, hopped around on here. I don't consider her... A really spooky horse but she's also not a deadhead like she's not just gonna not care about anything there's horses that I've messed with before that just act like they were born broke and that's not her either so she's kind of in the middle so here's tacking up I sped it up but you can see that she doesn't really move around she's good about the saddle being thrown on and I also have the boat buoys on there to sort of act like legs just to have more things bouncing around on her. So immediately, I go to working her. You can see I recorded from walking her from where she was tied up. And also, I feel totally comfortable tacking her up when she's tied up. Like, she doesn't worry me that she's going to blow up or anything. So you can walk her, trot her both directions, make her lope both directions. And so far, I've never had her hump up even. I put a rope around her middle and like put it in her flanks and made her, you know, pulled on it and she's kicked out. And I did that for a few days and then she just learned that the pressure around her middle wasn't going to go away until she relaxed. I keep hitting her in the face accidentally with the buoy on that side. You can pull on the back cinch, yank on the stirrups, pat her in the flanks. I've only bridled her a few times, so I put the bridle on her here. And pretty much I've never I've never really worked on this, so I haven't, you know, taken time to teach her to open her mouth. I pretty much just try to be smooth about it, and she bridles pretty well. She keeps her head down if you ask her to. She's good about her ears being touched. Good about her ears being touched. She cut her ear once when she was younger, and I, like, super glued it back together. <laughs> and um, looks pretty good. I should be a plastic surgeon. 
But anyway, she's good about her ears being touched. Okay, so this ground driving situation. I'd never done this with her before, but I thought it would be good to show how she handles new things. Now, I have tied her to her own tail, which some people might think is crazy, but if you prepare them right, they're fine. So I've tied her around, like had her flex her nose around to the side, not super bent or anything, and then tied her to her tail so that if she pulls against it, her tail, you know, pulls a little bit and she can kind of straighten out her head. But if she just gives, her tail is able to relax and she can just kind of go in a circle. And that's how I teach them all, tie them around like that, and then I'll chase their hindquarters a little bit, make their forequarters go through, and then when I get on and ride them, I'll slide my hand down the rein, bend their nose, and then have someone on the ground do the same thing, and they go, oh yeah, this makes sense. So anyway, I wanted to show something new, like this ground driving, and show how she handles it when she hasn't done it before. So you can see she gets a little confused on the turns, pulls right there on me. There she goes through the turn. And so anyway, she might have been confused about some of this stuff, but it was never like, oh my gosh, I can feel a rope up against my legs. You know, no worry like that. Because she's already been put in several binds, whether it's the hobbling or the tying her around. So I just have her work on turning, going, stopping, backing up. She's kind of putting her head down trying to figure out where the release is. So then I was on my other horse here. And I got Scooter in the arena. And I'm going to show how she ponies. Now... Like with anything in this video, sometimes she does it well, sometimes she's not as good at it. For the most part, she did pretty well with it. I hadn't done this with her in probably about a year, so she hadn't done it in a while, but she really remembered it well. Have her cozy up like how she did to the mounting block to get her to scoot over to my horse. I can put my leg over, spank on her, just desensitize. And here we go. So I have her yield her hindquarters. And then I have her bring her front end through. And this horse she lives with out in the field. And he actually like will beat up on her sometimes. <laughs> so she, I try to make him not bite her or anything. Now we're doing the hindquarters again. Four quarters. Very good. Have her cozy up. Now I'm going to show how she backs up. Sometimes she'll back up crooked away from the horse that you're on. Now we're trotting along here. Sometimes she'll get too far forward. Sometimes she'll be too far behind. She's only probably been ponied about five times in her three years, I would say. This whole summer, I was like, I'm going to work with her a lot. And then I probably worked with her like 15 times here and there. Now I kind of have to spank her a little bit with the end of my rope to get her into the lope. Bring her back down to the walk. Now the other direction, I sped up just because it's the same thing. Walking, trotting, loping. Then I took her out, ponied her around the field. For the most part with this and with anything that I do with her, when I work with her, it's like business time. It's not, you know, you can play and bite the horse that I'm on or when we're lunging her or anything where it's just me and her. It's not about, you know, kicking out at me or anything like that. It's, she knows 
that it's time to be serious. She has all the whole rest of her time in the field that she can mess around. Going in the water. We've only worked on going in the water probably three times in her whole life. <laughs> this was the third time. Maybe the second time, I can't remember. And she goes in, you know, paws in the water, plays around. I've never had her swim, so I don't know. My pond isn't deep enough for that, but she goes both directions. And this is the same thing with the tarp or the trailer or anything scary. If she didn't want to go in, I would just work her and release when she'd go near it. That's how I taught her to go in. Now we're bathing her here. Have her turn around. I was off the other side of her. And spray off her sweet little face. <laughs> Look at her little tongue here. <laughs> Aww. And then I have a few more pictures here at the end. So if you're interested in her, the easiest way to contact me is through Facebook Messenger. My name is Adriana Azevedo. Or you could email me at audrey.azevedo at gmail.com. Before we're done, I just want to mention that I said earlier I have Scooter's sister. Her name's Itchy. They have the same sire, and his sire is Artful Investment. So you can look him up. He did a lot. He was like the reserve super horse several times. And if you're interested in both of them, or maybe you're not interested in Scooter, you might be interested in Itchy. Itchy's been with my friend this summer, and she has been ridden on a ranch. So I'll be seeing her in probably a couple weeks. So if you're interested in either of them or both of them, let me know.